Uh, in terms of translation, all you do is translate the adjective as you normally would. So normal translation plus er, or for uh, adjectives in English that don't add er more, however you translate that adjective. So in this case, dear er, but if, for example, you had an adjective that meant something like hectic, in English we don't say hectic er, we just say more hectic. Um, so do be aware of those two possible translations. Also, if you see a comparative adjective without anything directly to compare it to, you can translate it as rather. So if uh, you're talking about a person, for example, and you want to say that uh, he has more of some quality than other people in general, but you don't actually specify people, um, you can just say he was rather intelligent. Another important note is that if you see an ablative noun or substantive adjective after one of these comparatives, that is an ablative of comparison. It's telling you dearer than what, um, or more hectic than what. So if you were to see something like carior vita, uh, that could be dearer than life. This was used for the most part when the first thing to be compared is in the nominative or accusative case. So you'll see this mostly with subjects and objects. Uh, you can also see uh, when the first element be compared is not in the nominative or accusative case. When quam is used, the same construction and or case are used as the uh, element before it. So in this case, uh, the item after quam would also be in the genitive singular case because our carioris is in the genitive singular case. So these are your two options for giving more information about um, what you're comparing.